Hey everyone, and welcome to another series in my podcast and my YouTube channel. Today we have Katie uh, on with us, and she's going to introduce herself. So tell us a little about yourself. Sounds good. Hey, I'm Katie Momo from Brilliant Media Marketing. So I help businesses with social media, Facebook advertising, and copywriting. And I'm so happy to be on the show. And for those of you who don't know, the day we're recording this is Boom's birthday. So <laughs> happy birthday, Boom! Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for Katie. taking the time That's to talk so to me sweet. on this special day. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm so grateful that, that you brought that up. Um, I wouldn't even have thought about it. But that's great. So copywriting, I didn't actually know that you did that. That's interesting. How did you actually get into what you're doing right now? Tell us your story. Sure. Um, it's, it's a weird one. So um, I actually studied design. So I started going into jewelry design about 10 years ago. Oh. Um, and I worked one-on-one -on -one with brides. So um, designing engagement wings, wedding wing, rings, wings. <laughs> <laughs> I think I have designed a few wing things as I'm well. Sure, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, and in that business, I also um, did the marketing for the company as well. So I, I did a lot of print advertising because about 10 years ago, there wasn't a whole lot of digital stuff. Right. And then as the years went on, I wanted to create my own line. So about, I don't know, maybe four years ago, I started really looking into what I would need to do to create my own line. And I was w working with, um, with my web developer because at that time I didn't even do my own sites, which I do now. Right. And he was like, you really need to get into social media marketing. And it was like a totally foreign word for me. I was like, social media marketing. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, it didn't get cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, the acronym would be SMM. And I'm like, SMM? I don't know if that's what I want to. <laughs> oh There's a lot of process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I started um, researching what I would need to do in order to market my jewelry business or my jewelry line that I was creating, and I kind of fell in love with it. I like totally fell down the deep end, and I ended up completely leaving my in my jewelry business, or at least that version of it aside. I still do custom stuff like I was doing before, okay. um, but I decided to leave, to leave the whole like line thing alone. Turned out I was kind of bored by it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I don't want to make the same thing a hundred times. <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 You want to you want to switch it up, especially if that's what you're used to, right? Right. And uh, yeah, I started learning all about it. I took a whole bunch of courses. I've always loved writing, so I started taking copywriting courses. And then um, I was in a couple groups that I was in for when I was planning to do my jewelry business. And then people would post questions and then I would answer things and people are like, oh, that's really helpful. Thank you so much. And then people will be like, do you do private coaching? Do you do copywriting? And it just kind of went from there. And that's how I really fell in. I honestly fell in like bum first. I pictured myself going through a door like, ah, oh, back. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That's how I fell in the world of digital marketing. <laughs> <laughs> I love the visual. I can actually see it happening. Um, yeah, and I'm super klutzy, so like it, it goes <laughs> hand in hand. <laughs> That's awesome. That's so cool. So it's so funny because I, I feel like what I'm doing right now, the meditation and teaching people how to meditate and all that, it's so interesting because I never in a million years would have thought that I'd be doing this. I, I was thinking I would do some kind of maybe coaching. I have no idea. I wasn't even thinking about anything, but this kind of came about. Yeah. Just randomly because people are asking questions and they're like, do you do this? Can you do this for me? Well, like, really? Yeah, sure. And I get paid for this? I mean, it's insanity, right? So it's I can awesome. totally see that you are in the same boat because you're like, wow, I do this and I love it and I'm getting paid for this. This is just amazing. And that's what I want for everyone on this planet. You know, I want everyone to kind of get to that point where they're doing something that they love to do and they're doing it. They would do it even if they didn't get paid for it, basically. And yeah. and now they're getting paid for it, and that's just like the icing on the cake. That's amazing. That's awesome. And so, did was there was there any kind of dissension or like your parents or your family member or I don't know your partner? Did they feel like maybe you sh you're like you know going crazy and you should go back to a nine to five or do something real with your life? Because I get that all the time. <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I think I'm I'm in a unique situation because my parents are entrepreneurs. They've had 
many, many businesses. Um, so they were the ones all almost like pushing me in a way, like at the same time, they're like, yeah, job is safety. But at the same time, it's, you know, they, they knew that I was always that entrepreneurial kid. I was always the one who was like trying to make friendship bracelets and stuff like that and sell them. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, like any little thing I was like trying to figure out how can I turn this into something bigger, bigger than just myself. Um, so they were actually hugely inspiring to me. Right. Um, at the same time though, because I did such an abrupt turnaround, I think that probably some people lost faith in me, you know, cause you're like, I'm doing this. No, I'm doing that. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and from the outside, that seems really disjointed. It doesn't seem to be any like connection there. And it just seems like you're picking anything willy nilly and people don't see sort of the internal work and behind the scenes of how things sort of relate. Mm -hmm. And I've been in marketing for years. I'd done that for this other, for a few other companies, but instead of doing the print version, I started doing the digital version. And um, I totally see, and I see, I hear a lot of people talk about how their families really, um, you know, they, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm so grateful that my family actually does. Even though, yeah, I think that there was a little discord when I was like, okay, you're doing something totally different now. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes absolute sense. It's nice that they're, they're entrepreneurs themselves, so they kind of get it from the, from the inside out. You know, they see what's behind the curtains. Because most people, when they look, I'm sure you've had that situation as well, people who aren't, aren't entrepreneurs, they look at what you're doing, and they're confused. I mean, they always ask me questions like, why are you doing it this way? Why aren't you doing it that way? Why are you using this? Why are you doing this? And, and... In my opinion, instead of wasting my time explaining it to them, because basically that is a waste of my time. It, oh, yeah, it totally is. Yeah, yeah so I just, <laughs> I'm just thinking that I'm going to do what I need to do. And then once I am successful and, you know, doing what I, I already think I'm a success because I'm living my life the way I want to live it, which is absolutely a success in my books. And same Huge thing for success. you. But yeah, and like in a monetary success, once that arrives, then I'll be able to say, you know, I did it this way because it was right to me and it felt right and I it was using my judgment and here I am. And that's what's going to kind of answer the question, like, are you making millions yet? You know, are you doing what you want to do? The stupid questions that everyone asks. And so yeah. to kind of move on from that, like copywriting and, and, and design, obviously this is your, this is what you want to do, but your heart is telling you to do this because this is what you do. Do you yeah. see yourself kind of doing this for the foreseeable future? Do you have any other projects in mind? What, what do you see for yourself as a, as a vision for your you know, larger future? Um, I think I fall into that classic, like, um, <laughs> multi-passionate person. Yeah. So I absolutely love what I'm doing now. I love advertising. I love marketing. Um, I really love working with other businesses so I can sort of be by myself, but still be a part of something that's bigger. So it feels like I'm an essential part to somebody else's dream, but I don't really have to have the massive team behind it to support it. I don't have to manage 50 people. Yeah. <laughs> I can just do my piece with a few other people on my team and that's good. Um, at the same time, of course, I always feel like there's other things that are really important to me and I'm not sure if they will ever turn into a business or if it's something that I just really like on the side, because I think that's important too, to have, um, just hobbies and stuff that maybe you'll never monetize. You just enjoy it for what it is. Definitely. Um, so I really love yoga. I exercise all the time. It's really important to me. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's going to turn into anything. I'm not saying it will. And I'm not saying that it won't. Mm -hmm. If a good opportunity comes up, then I will pursue it. And I think being flexible is so important because I would otherwise I would never be here right now. <laughs> that is so true. I would still be on another track like you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so true. It's so funny because I tell people it's so funny because people sometimes think of flexibility as being fickle, and yes. I I want to kind of differentiate between the two because a lot of people who are in my life they're very logical individuals and I love them for that because I am a very spontaneous impulsive person and I love myself mm -hmm. for that but when they see me being spontaneous or impulsive they think that I'm just doing it by the fly fly, fly the, by, by the pants right I mean I'm not thinking about it I'm just like oh look there's a pretty picture I'm gonna go follow it right <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in fact like you said there's a lot of internal work going on I mean I, I do a lot of meditation as you might know mm -hmm. I do a lot of journaling yoga is my favorite I, I do at least five times a week I do yoga practice and all of this internal work is what happens 
what results in these decisions. Everyone always sees like I'm moving from one thing to another, but they don't actually see, like you said, the exactly. internal work that's necessary. So I'm so glad you brought that up because it's so important. We're not fickle. We're not being spontaneous. We're not being impulsive. We're actually thinking about it, but we don't actually share this whole journey because it would just be, it's a very long process internally. So we don't, totally. I obviously won't share that with you, but obviously it is going on inside of you, right? So that makes absolute sense. I'm so glad you said that. And so, and that's a really sorry, good go way on. to phrase it too, because I'm, you know, I, I think when you're always, when you are in business, you're always thinking of opportunities, like all the time, you're all like, you have to really shut a lot of it out because otherwise it's noise and they're good ideas. And I collect them in my, in my journals because there might be something that comes up later or sometimes I even give ideas to other people because I'm like, okay. this is a great idea. I'm not the person to act of action it yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you if this is the right fit for you please take it and run with it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but yeah you can't verbalize everything that comes up so even though you've been sort of simmering on that idea for a while it might be the first time that other people see it come outwardly from you even though on the inside it was something that you've been thinking about for a while so yeah there's a there's a big difference and I mean if you came out with everything that you were thinking about all the time people would really think you are fickle <laughs> like oh my god <laughs> that is so true it also I mean I'm a very analytical person and I'm an introvert I don't know about you I follow the Myers-Briggs personality type and I'm an INFJ and so if you know anything about that you can tell that I think all the time I'm analyzing every single thing down to the details it's such an annoying habit of mine but it also results in all these ideas like you said and it results in all of these actions so one of the things I do want to mention is that all of this thinking doesn't matter if you don't put action behind it. And like you've done, you've actually had the idea and you've put it into effect. You know, it does not matter all the different ideas you have. Like you say, you can put in your journal. Everyone has like a billion ideas in their head, but most of us yeah. don't actually do anything with it. And so the point is when you have an idea, put it into effect. Even if people think you're crazy, like put it, do yeah. something with it, you know, try it out like you did. Absolutely. And also too, you never know until you do it because I'm, sometimes you think you'll want to do something but until you take those steps and actually work in the space or even if you think you want to work with a particular type of client and you can think about it all you want it seems like a really great idea but unless you actually do it you don't know and doing is going to give you the answers it really that is the secret <laughs> it's not really a secret <laughs> it kind of formula. seems like a secret it. though because most people don't even bother with the with actual action of it they'll They'll have all these ideas, but they don't actually, you know, unfortunately take, take the, do the work. It is hard though. I understand completely. I mean, doing yeah. the work is so different from actually talking about it. It's a completely different beast. So I get it. I get why people don't do it, but yeah. And so. And it's scary. Oh my God. It's so like, scary. It's scary to do the thing. And it's scary to find out the thing that you thought was your thing wasn't your thing. Mm. It's scary to turn away from the thing. <laughs> yeah. And. I think you need to give yourself that permission and that grace to explore. And I think you need to do that in so many areas of our life because I think, especially here, I guess maybe in North America, like there's so much pressure to like be good at one thing or like identify as this thing or like you can look at your friend and be like, so-and-so is an accountant. But like we don't have to fit into that box and that's okay. I think we just need to let ourselves be fine with that and let ourselves explore it. Right. No, that's so beautiful that you said that. It's interesting because um, I am actually, I, I do options trading on the side and that's completely different from meditation, oh, cool. obviously. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a very random mix, mishmash of things that I do, but I love it. It's like... Go it's, mishmash. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I, when I try to explain to people, I'm a meditation coach and then I do options trading and, you know, I do yoga and I, I love to travel, all that stuff. It's all of these different parts of us that make us who we are, like a humi unique human being that we are, right? So like you said, we yes. can't put ourselves into a box. It's just not possible. There's no way. There's people that they can't explain what I do because, yes, I, I do marketing uh -huh. and I still do custom jewelry. Right. And then other people only identify me as a travel blogger, oh. even though I've only done a couple of travel blogs, <laughs> but they're like, that's, that's what you do. And one of my one of my best friends like I have no idea how what to say that you do and I'm like that's that's okay. 
I'm <laughs> just like, I have no idea how to introduce you, Katie. You said parties. I'm just going to say, this is Katie, and she'll tell you what she does kind of thing. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> just like you. You're like, what do I feel like bringing up right now? Because true, true. there's also so many different aspects of your life, and you want fulfillment from different things, and you probably won't get that from doing just one thing. It's okay to explore a few different paths and you know, one might be your big money maker and one might make a little bit on the side. If you enjoy it, it's still a hobby. Yeah, true. Definitely. And um kind of kind of switching paths a little bit. I just I want you to if possible give people some tips or tricks or things that you wish you had known when you first started on this journey. I know I have a few of those things myself, so I know that you'll have some as well. Could you share with us? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, a huge thing is finding community of other business people. It doesn't even have to be in your in your own niche. Mm -hmm. um, when I started out, I had no idea. Like it was probably a year down the track when I realized like Facebook groups exist. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> And like what a world of difference that is that we can connect with people mm -hmm. all over the world just based on passion and interest. Because before I was really forging it alone. Mm -hmm. And that's hard. Oh my god, yes. <laughs> um, none of my friends own businesses or have any desire to, and that's totally fine. Everyone has their own path, what's good for them. But it's really hard when you can't it's hard to explain to people like, you know, I don't want to go out on Friday night. I'd rather sit home and work <laughs> on an opt-in page. <laughs> oh you my God. Like a crazy person. <laughs> or like, why is the conversion rate so low? And people are just like, <laughs> it's very lonely. If you don't find your crew of people or people who at least understand what you're coming from. So I would say, as fast as you can starting out on your journey find the people that you can connect with mm -hmm. because you you need that support along the way <laughs> so true oh my god and I, I was in the same boat as you I had no idea facebook groups existed and as soon as i found them i was like oh my god hallelujah i can't believe there are people on this planet who think exactly like me because obviously totally. like you said i don't have that many entrepreneurs around me especially my kind of age group. Most of the people who are my age group, they're mostly focusing on drinking as much as they can <laughs> and partying and uh, nine to fives. Like they don't even, there is no other option in their mind. Like they can't even think of the fact that they want to open their own business. Why would they? I mean, they're making good money from what they're yeah. doing and they like it kind of. Um, and they're able to you know, spend the money on whatever they want. So in their mind, there isn't a different option. And so you are right. It just feels really lonely sometimes when you're sitting at home working on your own. You need that support system. Anything else that you would say? Yeah. Um, I would say try the different tools to help keep you on track because it's really easy to get shiny object syndrome, especially when you are somebody who has a whole bunch of ideas. Um, for myself, I have my Google Calendar is like my life. <laughs> I plan out everything, like it'll be hour by hour of whatever project that I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, there's a rule, I can't remember what the actual name of it is, but basically it says that time will expand to the to or the project will expand to the time that you allow it. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you give yourself all day to do one thing, it will honestly take all day. <laughs> You'll just be like, and then I'm going to change the type font and blah, blah, blah. But if you're like, okay, I've got three hours to just bang this thing out, magically it gets done because you know that you need to get on to the next task after that. So Google, and it might not be Google Calendar for you. Maybe you're like a pen and paper kind of person. Um, or you want like a whole other system like Asana, whatever works for you, find something to keep you on track and keep focused on your goals because that will really help you define what you should be spending your time on and you won't get this shiny object syndrome where you're like, oh, I just watched a webinar on that. Or, oh, so-and-so said I should do this or I should have a membership or I should do this and that. Keep your goals in mind and then work backwards because that will help define the steps that you have to take in order to get where you actually want to go, not where everyone else says you want to go or somebody else's business plan says you should go. That makes absolute sense. And I am a pen and paper kind of gal, so yeah, I do write everything down and that works. Um, that's interesting that you use Google Calendar. That's amazing. That's awesome. Um, 
I like, like it because it, it'll be like bing, and then I'm like, oh yeah, I have to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like get back it's to great. business, yeah. Um, one final thing. I obviously am a big proponent of meditation, and I don't know if you do meditate or not, but I do know that you do other things in order to bring up your creativity because you are a very creative person. Tell us a little bit about that. Like, what are your tools to get you know your creative juices flowing or get back to your inner self that you know that that source of what all your creativity is sure i would say for me it's more of it's not about inspiring creativity i would say it's more about calming the mind which i feel like is my biggest struggle okay um i meditate i probably don't meditate as often as i should mm -hmm. totally aware of that <laughs> um but one thing that i really like to do that i find helps me really calm down and just zone out is just turning off all the lights and listening to some really calm music and then doing some yoga or some stretching. I find that really sort of takes me out of my mind and puts me, I find when I move that really helps. It really soothes me and sort of takes, takes the stress away out of my mind and puts it into my body and sort of grounds me. Mm -hmm. So that's what I do like at night. I'm just like, okay, lights out, <laughs> music time, stretching Amazing. time. <laughs> that sounds and I also, calming. It's very relaxing. So good. Um, and this is going to sound super weird and probably only people who've done a lot of design work will get this, but sometimes editing photos just, I guess it's just because it's like, you know, a couple pixels at a time. It's just like, I guess it's like the coloring book idea. Uh -huh. You know, I, I tried that, but sometimes I found that the the little bits to color in were too small. Like, it, it stressed me out. I was like, I need to color big to calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I guess with, um, with editing photos, it's kind of the same idea. I can even, like, you know, stretch it out to give me a big panel to work with. And I'll just sort of, like, you know, do little touch-ups. And I find that very relaxing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> because I've it's never heard that before. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, and so what photos are you, are you, are, I mean, working on? Just random ones or uh, do you actually? I do a little bit of photography myself. It's mainly, I, I help, um, I do a blog. I was actually blogging every week, but I'm going down to every month because I'm just too busy with client work. But I also do um, help some of my clients with their blogs. And actually one of them just won uh, one of the top 100 blogs on the internet for pregnancy. So oh, wow. I'm so proud of that. Awesome. Yeah. So big award for them so I'm really happy to be in a part of that um, so yeah I do a lot of graphics and stuff um, for that as well and of course for Facebook ads as well I want to make sure that the images are looking amazing yeah, that's <laughs> nice <great>. and clickable <laughs> um, so if someone wanted to find you you said you're, you have a travel blog or you have a blog can you tell us how we, we can find you online yeah, absolutely. I am at brilliantmediamarketing.com. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually have just a couple travel blogs on that same blog. So if you go into the blog section, they have the little categories. If you pick travel, I just actually lump them all in there because I was like, I don't, tr I would love to travel enough to support a separate website. I don't mm -hmm. yet. <laughs> yet, exactly. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I do have a couple of travel blogs in there. So yeah, Amazing. that's where you can find me. Yay. Thank you so much for spending time with us today, Katie. It was awesome. I love your energy and you obviously are such a happy-go-lucky person. So I just, I like that energy that you're bringing to the table. It's awesome. So have an amazing day, guys, and we will talk to you guys soon. Bye for now. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.